Hi, Steve Summers and Eric Scopel uh, for Reduct.com. Eric, we just finished with a rather long session <laughs> with Dana Altman. Uh, summarize what well, I think that might be the longest Dana Altman's ever talked in, in media. He has talked about 15 minutes, a variety of subjects. I think kind of the, the big takeaway is that Jonathan Lloyd uh, has been the starting point guard for a long time, broke his nose earlier this week in practice, and uh, not sure if he's ready to go or not. Uh, Altman did say if there's one guy on this team who, who could fight through an injury like that would be Jonathan Lloyd. So he'll be a game-time decision. I think that's something kind of to monitor as a game with the UCLA comes up tomorrow. Well, in fact, uh, um, no. Jason Kalis. Jason Kalis came in afterwards, and he he predicted that uh, Jonathan Lloyd would would play. Yeah, and, and one of the things that was interesting there is that Kalis actually had a uh, had a similar injury last year, broke a nose, and uh, he wasn't sure if he'd missed any time. So I think both of them kind of tough guys, and obviously you see that in the court, uh, but we're not sure yet on Jonathan Lloyd, and that could be a big loss against UCLA, who who's a good basketball team and has a lot of good backcourt players. Well, well, and, and as you say, we, we had about 15 minutes with uh, Dana Altman. <laughs> Probably a good five to seven minutes of it was, was talking about Lloyd. And, and um, you know, again, that, you know, as uh, Altman said, that's 33 years of coaching. Uh, Lloyd is in one top of the top five. five. Top five toughest players he's coached. That yeah. says a lot. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, and he was real grateful for uh, Jonathan Lloyd's attitude, particularly last week when Lloyd did not make the start and, and basically told Coach Altman that, uh, um, you know, whatever the coach needed, he was willing to do. So, anyway, this week is uh, going to be a little bit different test than Washington State when UCLA rolls them down. Yeah, and Washington State, don't, don't get it wrong. Obviously, it's good to get off that five-game losing streak, but Washington State probably – uh, with the injury of Devontae Lacey, their leading scorer, the worst team in the conference right now, and they showed that, uh, just couldn't score the basketball against Oregon, and, and maybe Oregon made improvements defensively, but a big part of that was Washington State. So UCLA brings a whole different animal to, to Matthew Knight on, on Thursday here because they're you know arguably the best scoring team in the conference, and that's going to be a real challenge. Uh, a lot of diff difficult parts there. Uh, Kyle Anderson, their 6'9", point guard, shooting guard, mm -hmm. A matchup nightmare for Oregon, especially if a guy like Lloyd, if he plays, is guarding him, he might give up a full foot on him. So uh, UCLA is going to be tough, and, and for Oregon to kind of right the ship, this would be a very, very big win at home to kind of, again, get that momentum going. Well, after uh, uh, UCLA uh, tomorrow night, on Saturday, USC comes into Matthew Knight Arena. And it's kind of interesting because I think this week kind of mirrors last week in that Oregon played Washington, had a tough game, lost it, turned around, and got to play Washington State, who's not a very good basketball team. This week could be the same way. UCLA, a really good team, USC just hasn't been. So, uh, you know, there's an opportunity here for Oregon to hopefully at least get a split because you, you imagine they'd be able to beat USC, who frankly hasn't really beaten anybody. Uh, but, you know, op op opportunity now to get a sweep and kind of get that season kind of right back on the right track, beating UCLA, who uh, obviously a really good team would be kind of an upset at this point, the way Oregon has played the last month. Well, that's uh, something we will want to look for, uh, UCLA tomorrow night here at Matt, uh, Matt, Matthew Knight Arena uh, <laughs> and USC on Saturday. Now, uh, a couple of things that uh, we'll want to wrap up. Uh, Eric Armstead, of course, has left the team. Coach Altman explaining that uh, Eric was uh, hoping that he might be able to get a little more uh, uh, involved. involved in the team. Yeah. But, uh, you know, starting off so late in the season, it was going to be tough for him. Uh, Eric then decided that he'd just concentrate on academics and uh, further in his football career, which we all know is uh, uh, where he's going to end up. He's an NFL player for sure. Yeah, um, I think it's a smart decision from a football perspective for sure. And honestly, I was a little surprised he gave it a go this year just because of you know, the potential as an NFL prospect. It seems like you'd want to focus all your energy into that. So uh, he did get his first basket as a duck. And maybe that was a goal was just, you know, once I get that, f that first NCAA basket, uh, then I'll call it. Then I'll call it. And obviously, he did that against Washington State uh, on Sunday, and, and now his career as an Oregon basketball player is over. Well, uh, that's uh, um, good news for the Oregon football team, um, and uh, we will uh, be seeing more of Eric Armstead uh, in spring ball. So, uh, next uh, step, though, uh, up for us is uh, you'll be here in your uh, press box. Yep. Uh, press row seat uh, covering the UCLA and USC game on uh, Thursday and, uh, night and then on Saturday. Yep. Uh, I'll be manning educk chat, uh, game chat for those uh, subscribers to educk.com that uh, wish to come follow game um, um, 
in chat. So uh, uh, until then, this is uh, Steve Summers with uh, Eric Scopel for educk.com.